Hi everybody. The other day I ran into a problem where I tried to create a ring like you can see here and inside of this ring there is an internal channel. So if I turn on the section analysis here, right? So there's this internal channel. Don't know why you want to do such a thing. For me, I wanted to have a, a strap in here, but you might have a marble which is running in there or whatever. But since this is an internal channel, you, you cannot use support to kind of support this overhang here. And so you rely on the capability of your 3D printer to bridge those gaps here. And this works actually surprisingly well, as long as the gap is no more than maybe an inch or so. But as this gap here becomes larger than an in inch, then you start to see sagging and uh, the bridge will fail. So you can see this uh, in the slicer right here. So right now uh, I'm just before the bridging layer is about to be laid down. So here is now the bridging layer. And you can see as long as the direction of my bridge is more or less radial to my channel here, and in the case of a circle, I have no problem. But as my direction becomes uh, more tangential to my circle, then those bridges become too long and we potentially run into a problem. So now it is difficult enough to set direction of a layer in a slicer, even if you have just one direction, which is kind of optimal. But of course, in the case of the ring here, or maybe some other more complicated shape of a bridge you want to uh, accomplish, sometimes there is no single direction which will work uh, over the entirety of your channel. So how can we get around that? Well, the solution I came up with, I want to show you, and that is essentially producing little small features in our model. So let me just actually suppress this one feature here. So we can see down into our channel here. And what I have done, I have produced a sketch like so. And the trick is that we have two parallel lines here and those lines are spaced by twice the wall thickness of our part. So let me go back to the slicer here and open the slicer setting. So you can see I, in for my model, I have set a wall count of four layers and that translates into a 1.76 millimeter wide wall here. Right? So here's the outer wall and there's three inner walls and then the distance from here to here is just 1.76 millimeters. So this is a number, uh, keep this in mind. And this is essentially what I said here. I have the 1.76 millimeters in this direction and 1.76 millimeters in the other direction. And now I can actually extrude this feature here. So here I have extruded this feature and I have extruded it by 0.2 millimeters, which is the layer height of a single layer. So that is the other feature you need to uh, match to your slicer settings. And then we can simply pattern this particular feature. In this case, a circular pattern. I can pattern this, this feature around my circle here. So let me turn on the suppressed feature here again. Here we go. So now this is now internal and export my part as a mesh file. Save and yes, overwrite the old mesh file. And then if I go back to my slicer here, slicer now is smart enough to realize that my model has changed so I can reload my model. And I also, let me just hide that. I have to re-slice my model. And then after some time, well, that doesn't look much different just yet, but if you go one layer below, then you can see now we have those nice radial bridges all across our circle. And those bridges, they can be printed uh, quite nicely. And then, of course, you can imagine the second layer, which I lay on top of here, has no problem being flat. And then I can finish up my part like that. So that worked pretty well. I actually have a little bit of a picture here of a small section of the circle I have printed. And you can see here where our layers overlay with the wall, they get squished and they adhere pretty nicely. 
But then, of course, where we have the bridging, the filament doesn't get squished. So it kind of has a little bit of a round and somewhat undefined shape. But nevertheless, it bridges without sagging across this gap here. And then the other layers will lay on top of here. So that works pretty well. Uh, I think you, you probably can also play a little bit more with your slicer settings to with the temperature and the speed uh, across those bridges here. I kind of went for pretty high temperature because I want those to be a pretty strong part where the layers uh, adhere well. So those bridges are not necessarily the prettiest, but that's not what I was after in this particular case. So this also actually works for any kind of internal channel. So let me just open a different model. So here is another example. And here we have some internal channels, which are basically some splice with some random shape here. And then the same idea here. I created a sketch, right? So here is a sketch. I extrude this uh, up by, by one layer height. And again, I have twice the wall thickness as a width here. And then I can use the edit pattern on pass tool. And I can essentially create this pattern here along this path, right? And I can change how many of those patterns I want. So 25, for example, or 50 seem to have been working well for me here. And there's uh, another feature, actually, I haven't showed this before, but the default is here compute type is adjust. And if you do that, then he complains that this is not a very efficient way to do so. You should consider either the optimized or the identical uh, compute option. And so we can play with those. You can for, go for optimized. In this case here, that looks horrible. It's uh, probably not what you would consider optimized, but uh, identical actually works pretty well. And this uh, makes your model just a little bit easier to compute and hence your, your animations more fluent. For the circle, actually the, the optimized uh, worked worked as well. So not quite sure. I haven't done much of an experiment yet, which option actually is, is the best one, but you can definitely play with those. And then if we take this pattern here, right, and we import it into our slicer. So let me just show you that here. We have our bridges and the bridges they are nicely following the, the shortest distance across our gap here. You have to be a little bit careful because in, in some corners, you can see that uh, the bridges don't work quite as well and you probably would have to do some manual fine tuning here. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this uh, approach. It seems to be working pretty well and be pretty flexible for all kinds of different geometrical shapes. So I hope this helps. If so, give it a like, maybe consider even to subscribe and uh, good luck printing. Bye-bye.